आदरणीय महानुभावर अवश्य फाइनेंशियल सेक्टर यो गतिशील प्रणाली गतिशील क्षेत्र मध्य पर्द कीनोट स्पीकर एनआरबी रिसर्च डिपर्टमेंट का ईडी डॉक्टर गुणाकर भट्टजूला मंच में आमंत्रण करना चाहूँ मिस्टर चेयरमैन ऑफ़ द प्रोग्राम, सीनियर रेजिडेंट रिप्रेजेंटेटिव फ्रॉम द आईएमएफ, डिस्टिंग्विस्ट पार्ट्स फ्रेंड्स, लेडीज़ एंड जेंटलमैन, आई एम प्लेस्ड टू बी हियर टू शेयर सम ऑफ़ माय एक्सपीरियंसेस, थॉट्स एंड आइडियाज़, पर्टिकुलरली इन द बैंकिंग इंडस्ट्री, रिलेटिंग द मैक्रो and Growth Sellers Private Limited for providing me this an excellent opportunity. I believe that this uh, conference is organized in a topical issue in the relevant fashion, the financial issues that uh, Honorable Governor also highlighted some of the issues that Nepal's banking sector has to address in the coming days, particularly the challenges in the financial sector but the topic of my presentation is a little bit different. So I'm also speaking in English because I should not, uh, you know, uh, uh, make some injustice to Andreas, who is here, senior resident representative of the IMF. Also, he will hint me if I speak some unnecessary things. So the, the outline of my presentation is macroeconomic environment, banking development, the financial fragility, and some of the issues, whether I will have time or not, state versus market, and the opportunities and issues in the banking industry in Nepal. Well, as all of we know that the macroeconomy of Nepal is doing well, the macroeconomic indicators indicate that the economy is expanding at a higher growth path. For the last three years, we are in the growth trajectory of 7%. And it also forces us to rethink our potential GDP. Sometimes at the central bank also, we are thinking the potential GDP that we used to estimate around 5%, whether that has gone up. And in the last five years, the economic growth is 5.2% on an average. Similarly, in the last five years, per capita GDP, in the last five years, it has increased by 25%. So the expansion of the industrial economic activities, expansion of the tourism-related activities, and the favorable monsoon has supported to boost the economic growth in Nepal. Well. If we look at the inflation indicators also, the inflation has moderated in the recent years. In the last three years, the inflation is around 4%. So the growth is high, inflation is low. These two are the encouraging indicators on the macroeconomic front. And the role of the government in the economy is expanding. In the last three, four years, the share of the government spending in the total GDP has gone up, and it is around 40%. And it has both positive and some sort of the cautionary notes. The positive in the sense that the role of the government is expanding, it is investing in the social security, it is investing in the infrastructure. Nepal needs huge resources to develop the infrastructure, and also, the cautionary note is that whether the private sector's role is limited in the uh, years ahead because of the huge involvement of the government. So the five years ago, the role of the government was only around 20%, and now it is in the line of 40%. So the, the, that, uh, what I mean to say that, the, well, for the infrastructure development, it is good, but the private sector resources should not be crowded out that is the issue that we might have to 
thing. Well, how the monetary sector is doing, the financial sector is doing what I believe that the financial sector is profiling the economic growth in Nepal. If we look at the indicators, you also saw around 2,800 billion rupees, right? Uh, which would be around 90% of our GDP, right? our GDP being 3,000 billion. Uh, globally, what I know is in a, in a developed economies, in a, a developing, econ bigger economies, the total banking asset generally hangs around 150% to 200%, which is much higher. So my, observ my question or rather say observation is, is there a room to grow the banking asset more, you know, from 90% where we are today, one. Second is, now, if there's a room, if my observation is correct, then I would probably assume the challenge is really about growing the money supply, right? That's where the banks are facing the problem. We are not able to lend more because of the uh, growth in money supply is not there. I'm not an economist, you know, sir. I don't really understand how does the money supply actually grow? What should be done? Uh, what should central bank do? What should the banks do to increase the money supply? Thank you for your question, excellent question. Well, uh, generally, we apply the rule of the nominal GDP targeting for the private sector credit target and the money supply target. The international standard also in a number of countries like ours, they follow the nominal GDP targeting. If we see that in the last five years, our nominal GDP growth rate is less than 15%. 